Hi, my name is Sanjay Mukhopadhyay. I'm a staff pathologist at the Cleveland Clinic. I do pulmonary, mediastinal, um, and pleural pathology here. So I'm um, now purely a thoracic pathologist. And I'm also a director of the uh, uh, frozen section service. So I, I also do frozen sections at the Cleveland Clinic Department of Pathology. I'm uh, today going to talk to you about a relatively recent uh, form of interstitial fibrosis that's been recently described. And it's called smoking related interstitial fibrosis or SRIF. At the bottom left of the screen, you see my Twitter handle, which is at SMLungPathGuy. And I'm providing that because many pathologists in the current day are providing educational information on Twitter and are posting cases and are posting all kinds of um, interesting educational literature on Twitter. And this is really a good time to join Twitter and get involved in that educational activity. So we're going to get started with smoking-related interstitial fibrosis. I'm going to show you um, some slides, introduce you to the topic, and then show you a real case um, from a whole slide scanned image. So before we get to smoking-related interstitial fibrosis in particular, what you should understand is the concept of respiratory bronchiolitis. And here I'm showing you an image from a transbronchial biopsy, and you can see the alveolated lung in the background. So let me point out the alveolated lung here. Here's the alveolar septum. And you see within the air spaces are all these pigmented macrophages. You see the light brown colored macrophages. Here's a higher magnification that shows you that these macrophages have this light brown pigment in their cytoplasm and an occasional dark black speck. So the dark black specks are actually a very important clue as to what's going on and helps to differentiate these from the differential diagnosis, which is hemosiderin. So this uh, finding, these lightly pigmented macrophages within the alveolar spaces or air spaces, is known as respiratory bronchiolitis. The term is actually pretty confusing. It's a confusing term because bronchiolitis makes it sound like it's an inflammation of the bronchioles, whereas it, it actually does not necessarily need to involve bronchioles. And itis sounds like lymphocytes or plasma cells should be involved, but actually the Really, the, the cell of interest is a, is a macrophage, and so the itis refers to macrophages. And finally, respiratory bronchiolitis makes it seem like the only pathology should be within the respiratory bronchiole, but actually, respiratory bronchioles are not the only structure involved. In fact, alveolar ducts and alveoli themselves can be involved by this kind of finding. So what really is respiratory bronchiolitis? It's the accumulation of pigment-filled macrophages, the kind I showed you just now, within any air spaces, within respiratory bronchioles, within alveolar ducts or within alveoli. So they should be in the lumen, not in the interstitium. And this pigment is very special because it is derived from cigarette smoke. It's, and it has exactly the particles that are present in cigarette smoke, which, which has been shown by special techniques such as SEM-EDS. What's the significance of this finding? In most cases, it's just an incidental finding. All it tells you is that the patient either is a cigarette smoker or was a smoker. So that's all the information that you get from this finding in the lung. The best study that was done um, on this topic on respiratory bronchiolitis was done by Dr. Kadzenstein. The first author was Dr. Frege, um, and it came out in 2002, and they looked at this finding, respiratory bronchiolitis, and tried to correlate it with cigarette smoking history. And I direct you to this table in the paper, which shows you uh, the correlation between respiratory bronchiolitis and cigarette smoking status. So as you can see, of the current smokers, all 83 current smokers had respiratory bronchiolitis in their lungs. So if you, if you were a current smoker, you had these macrophages in your alveoli. Now for the ex-smokers, some of them had respiratory bronchiolitis, meaning that the macrophages hadn't gone away even though they'd stopped smoking. And some of the others, so in 25 out of 49 cases, um, they, uh, the respiratory bronchiolitis actually disappeared after, after they stopped smoking. And then the final box, which is the green box, refers to the never smokers. So you would expect that never smokers would never have respiratory bronchiolitis, and that is by and large true. But two cases, two patients in this study actually did have respiratory bronchiolitis. And there is uh, a pretty amusing detail, I, I think, about these patients in, in the results section. In one uh, patient, it seems to be that they were uh, exposed to diesel smoke and fiberglass, and so they might have had some pigment from that. But the other patient, um, the authors seem to be implying that that was actually a smoker or was exposed to cigarette smoke and um, uh, was, uh, had respiratory bronchiolitis on that ground. So respiratory bronchiolitis, what it is, is a common 
histologic marker of cigarette smoking. All of you that see lung biopsies from smokers will encounter this finding. Um, this finding can be seen in current smokers as we've seen. It can be seen in ex-smokers. You can quit um, an average of nine years. Um, so the du duration between uh, ceasing cigarette smoking and, and having the lung biopsy can be up to nine years and you can still have respiratory bronchiolitis in your alveoli. And the largest interval that's been recorded is 32 years in that study. These patients sometimes have no interstitial lung disease clinically or can have interstitial lung disease, can have other forms of smoking related lung disease in addition to RB like cancer or emphysema or can have a completely unrelated disease. Here's again uh, a picture of respiratory bronchiolitis. So this structure here is a small pulmonary artery and the structure next to it is a respiratory bronchiole and you can see these pigmented macrophages within it. But notice that the alveoli that are distal from the respiratory bronchiole also have these macrophages and it's still just respiratory bronchiolitis. It doesn't turn it into any other kind of entity. And here's the high magnification look. You can see the finely granular brown pigment in here along with an occasional black speck and that's the characteristic look of respiratory bronchiolitis. You must differentiate this entity from hemosiderin, which is also brown. So the macrophages are filled with a brown pigment, as you can see here. But the particles are a bit coarser and larger. And you do not have those black specks that I showed you in the previous, um, um, previous images. So as you go to the next picture, and I show you side by side respiratory bronchiolitis and hemosiderin, you can see the difference between the fine pigment and the coarse pigment, and the presence of black spots and the absence of black spots. If you do an iron stain, a pearl stain on these cases, you'll see heavy iron uh, positive staining in the hemosiderin as expected, but interestingly, the cigarette smoke is also lightly iron positive. So the iron doesn't necessarily differentiate these uh, as well as the HNE does, although the staining is heavier in hemosiderin than in smoker's pigment. Now, what is RBILD? RBILD is a specific situation um, known as respiratory bronchiolitis interstitial lung disease where respiratory bronchiolitis is the only pathologic finding in a surgical lung biopsy in a patient who seems to have interstitial lung disease clinically, in other words, has mild or minimal symptoms, cough, maybe mild dyspnea, and has bilateral ground glass opacities, making it seem like they have interstitial lung disease, whereas the only thing they have on the biopsy are these smokers' macrophages. So by definition, in RBILD, there should be no significant interstitial fibrosis on pathology. That's a very important point. So the CT impression of an interstitial lung disease is caused solely by macrophage accumulation within the air spaces. The second thing about RBILD is that it's a diagnosis of exclusion, so that you shouldn't have any other um, explanation for interstitial changes such as UIP or NSIP or DAD or organizing pneumonia on the pathologic examination. And then we come to this obsolete or near obsolete entity known as DIP or desquamative interstitial pneumonia. And what many authors seem to feel is that they, they, this entity has numerous macrophages within the alveoli, more diffuse than is seen in RBILD. But the entity is actually pretty poorly defined with no widely accepted pathologic criteria. There's no agreement between different papers on how much interstitial fibrosis is allowed. Uh, what other findings are required, whether you need lymphoid aggregates or eosinophils. And finally, not all patients with DIP are smokers with pigmented macrophages. Many patients are actually non-smokers with other kinds of macrophages accumulations. So the end result of this DIP entity is that it lumps together smoking-related interstitial lung disease with patients who are not smokers and don't have a smoking-related disease. And so the term has become a meaningless wastebasket. It is now universally accepted that desquamative in this term DIP is a misnomer. The cells filling the alveoli are not desquamated epithelial cells, they're actually macrophages. And here's a, a picture from 1977, an electron micrograph. Uh, the first author was Dr. Ray Tubbs, who was at the Cleveland Clinic at that time, and showed that these cells were actually macrophages by electron microscopy, and that was proven later on by immunohistochemistry. So, so that brings me to this uh, latest uh, uh, paper in, in smoking-related interstitial lung disease, which is um, um, a term called smoking-related interstitial fibrosis, or SRIF. And it was described in this paper, which said, clinically occult interstitial fibrosis in smokers, classification and significance of a surprisingly common finding in lobectomy specimens. I was uh, a part of this study, which was done by Dr. Kazenstein um, in Syracuse. And what it described was a new entity called SRIF, 
which was defined as having distinctive alveolar septal fibrosis with thick, ropey, hyalinized collagen bundles in the alveolar septites. A very posicellular fibrosis combined with respiratory bronchiolitis and emphysema. So these patients always have RB and emphysema in the background of any severity, including DIP-like respiratory bronchiolitis. So here's a table from that study which I'd like to highlight. People often don't realize this. So if you look at the first nine cases in this study, they're all SRIF. So the, the final diagnosis in these patients is SRIF, but they all have respiratory bronchiolitis and two of them actually had extensive RB, which in the past would have been called DIP. And notice also that all of these patients additionally have emphysema in their lungs. So here's what SRIF looks like pathologically. You have a very dense, ropey, posicellular interstitial fibrosis um, that expands the alveolar septa. And in the background, you see small areas of respiratory bronchiolitis. And notice that the entire lung is emphysematous. So this is not just pure emphysema, it's emphysema with a particular kind of fibrosis. Here's the fibrosis at high magnification. It has a very pink amyloid-like appearance, which is characteristic of this entity. And here's another picture that shows you that occasionally you have entrapped smooth muscle bundles mixed with this kind of fibrosis. Now, the background always has respiratory bronchiolitis and it can be pretty significant as seen in this picture. So SRIF always has respiratory bronchiolitis in the background. You can see small collections of macrophages which would be pigmented at high magnification. Sometimes this becomes very extensive and in the past, again, this would have been called DIP, but this is part of the picture of SRIF in some cases. Now, some people say, well, isn't this just emphysema? It's just a variant of emphysema. Well, it is not because as you can see on the left hand side of this picture, emphysema without SRIF should have no interstitial fibrosis. And that's part of the definition of emphysema is not to have significant interstitial fibrosis. But you, you can see the emphysematous lung on the right side of this panel is actually very significantly fibrotic. So the term emphysema alone would not do this justice. This is actually SRIF in an emphysematous lung. The advantages of the term SRIF is, are many. Firstly, it's very readily identifiable by pathologists. I teach this entity to my residents and they know it the next day. It clearly identifies smoking as the etiology of the fibrosis right there in the diagnosis. This entity is seen exclusively in cigarette smokers and it emphasizes in the diagnosis itself uh, interstitial fibrosis, which is usually the most striking finding in this entity. And it picks out not just any fibrosis, but a specific type of fibrosis with a specific morphology. And finally, it avoids the whole RBILD terminology. Remember, RBILD by definition does not have significant interstitial fibrosis on pathology. Here's a line from Dr. Kazenstein's excellent review article in the Journal of Clinical Pathology. And she says, furthermore, recognition of SRIF as a specific entity suggests that the time may have come to eliminate DIP from interstitial lung disease terminology altogether. This is from an expert who basically created many of the entities in, in current uh, interstitial lung disease terminology. NSIP, for example, was described by Dr. Kazenstein um, and uh, RBILD was uh, a term that was introduced by Dr. Kazenstein. So when she says that DIP is an outdated misnomer, I think we should all take that seriously. And now I'll show you a case from a whole slide image that has this entity known as smoking-related interstitial fibrosis. So we are going to switch to a whole slide scanned image from a patient who actually had SRIF. So this was a person um, who uh, smoked, who had a very extensive cigarette smoking history and had a lobectomy for an adenocarcinoma. So I'm not showing you the cancer, I'm showing you the background lung. So as we scroll down, you can see that this lung is actually very emphysematous and abnormal. And in fact, there are areas in this lung that don't have much fibrosis. So I'm going to show you one of those here. So here's the emphysematous lung, doesn't have a whole lot of fibrosis. But as you move around, you see areas of lung that are very significantly fibrotic. And so the term emphysema would not do this justice. As you go to high magnification, you see that these areas are filled with this posicellular, hyalinized, ropey collagen that is typical of smoking-related interstitial fibrosis or SRIF. And you see these collections of macrophages in the background that are actually respiratory bronchiolitis. So let me show you that at high magnification. So these are the typical macrophages of respiratory bronchiolitis. And right next to that on the right-hand side, you can see this posicellular hyalinized 
interstitial fibrosis that is uh, characteristic of SRIF. So I want to leave you with just this um, intermediate magnification picture of SRIF that you should recognize. You will see this most commonly in lobectomies from cigarette smokers, but you will occasionally encounter this in surgical lung biopsies. And hopefully I've taught you this new entity called SRIF that you should be able to identify in your practice.